Vuyo Lechu Zungula is one of the most loved and celebrated politicians in South Africa. He is the president of the African Transformation Movement, the ATM. Well, recently he went to a podcast by the name of State of the Nation and he spoke about the key issue that this channel speaks about and that's land. I want to break down his answer to the land question in South Africa and give you guys a little bit more meat to it. Welcome to King Said So, Africa's one land, one language, one currency, one army on King Said So. Africans can unite your Pan-Africanist podcast. Enjoy. Black Heart. The Hustle Continua, 100% good quality t-shirts, made to inspire you, goals and dreams. T-shirts are now available at an affordable price. Place your order now, 068-473-6908, Instagram at black7576, Facebook page Black Heart. Peace in Pan-Africanism to all my African brothers and sisters. Welcome back to King Said So. I am your host, Kahiso Shongwane Zinjiva, Mr. Easy Imali Eneng Eneng. And we're back at it again with another one. And ladies and gentlemen, I am the self-proclaimed professor of land because looks like I am the only one that has got the perfect answers to this land problem. I don't know why is it when our politicians are faced with the land question, they don't only beat around the bush, bush, but they don't give you a solid black conscious answers to the answer to the question, I mean, of land. Vuyo Zungula answered the question of land better than most I have had but still not to the satisfactory that I am looking for. The land question should be answered with no fear or favor. No fear, what do we mean? No fear of losing people, investors. No fear of offending people. No fear of favoring your own people. That's what I mean. So with no fear, you understand what I'm saying? So Mr. Zongula, a very celebrated uh, young man, Vuyolwechu Zungula, is loved by South Africans. Um, in, in recent time, he's, he's been loved more because of the Pala Pala issue. He stands with the public protector, Busisiwem Kobane. You can see this man is actually, his, his head is at the right place for African people. And I think we should give him uh, a hand for that and celebrate him for that. So he went to this State of the Nation um, podcast, questioned by this um, white man. I don't know his name. And um, I sense that arrogance from white people when they speak about land. I, I think you guys will sense the arrogance also. You'll, you'll go in the comment section because it's a topic that I'm very much um, passionate about. Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm giving my, my, myself a name, the, the self-proclaimed professor of land, King 053, Mr. Easy. Let's listen to how Vuyo, I'm going to cut this land question into three clips for you guys so that the video must not be too long. And of course, <laughs> just like the other videos, if you enjoy this one, you're going to type King do a part two for us. Let's listen to how Vuyo Zungula answered the land question part one. Uh, where do you stand? Where does your party stand on land ownership? Yeah, there must, the government must be um, capacitated via the constitution to expropriate land without compensation because um, you can't have a case whereby majority of the land is in, in the hands of the white minority and majority of the citizens are scrambling for a very, very, um, you know, few hectares of land. When are it you to... saying that the government doesn't have land that it could, uh, that it could capacitate people with? We're well, saying that over and above what the government has failed on one, the first thing that the government has failed on is to utilize the existing land to provide 
um, housing um, for, for the people, agriculture for people, and using that land for productive purposes. So the government has got it wrong there. But at the same time, the land ownership, when it comes to how much land is owned by the white minority and how much land is in the hands of the African majority, there's so much um, you know, injustice in, in the sense that if more than 80% of the land is in the hands of the white minority. But that's not true. I mean, so, that, that, that's then saying that uh, state land is in the hand of, of white min minority. That 80% number is a complete and utter lie, isn't it? No, based on the reports that no, have that, been that done. That report is, is based on a 30-year report, and it's not on owned land. It's on all land, and it's still taking government land as if it's white-owned. So, you know, I'm just saying that uh, this is an issue that, that obviously you're not going to get that growth or internal or external investment if you do not have secure property rights. It's just not going to happen. You wouldn't build up a nice farm if you knew that the government could take it away from you tomorrow. Yeah. No, the question of land expropriation without compensation is not a case whereby you just wake up and you take land willy-nilly like it has been done in other countries. But how, how do you protect against that? In our view you need to correct the wrongs of the past. If a person got land by the killing and the brutal murder of people, there needs to be justice. We can't... Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Zungula goes straight and shoots from the hip and says, listen, we do believe in expropriation of land without any compensation. Good. Good. As a pan-Africanist, that's what we want to hear first. I'm not sure if Vuyo has ever said that he's a pan-Africanist, but you know me. I judge every African person as if they are pan-Africanist, but I understand also that as pan-Africanists, we are at different levels. So, and again, I understand we've got social, different social statuses. So this question will always be answered, um, what, do we, what do they say, diplomatically by uh, politicians and of which I don't appreciate. I don't want them to give a diplomatic right answer when it comes to uh, the land question. But anyway, he did say, listen, we want a land expropriation without compensation. Then the interviewer, the white man, then disturbs him and say, are you saying that um, government does not have enough land? You know, and then he states that, listen, over 80% of the land is owned by white people. Then he says, the, the interviewer then, um, uh, you know, brushed that off and said, listen, that land audit that you are talking about is over 30 years. You, you cannot quote that 80%. Uh, listen, stop the lorry. That's why you have the land professor here. We don't want to quote anything that has to do with a land audit of 30 years ago. We just go and take out the land audit of 2000 financial year. And from that land audit, we can have statistics that we can take out and show you per hectare who owns which land where. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we need to, we need to cover this because if we don't show people exactly what the Department of Rural uh, uh, Land uh, says and... Um, uh, the, the Department of Land, uh, what do they call this department again? Department of the, uh, Rural Development and Land Reform. That's the department I'm looking for. Excuse me. <coughs> I had to go look for that for that name. Excuse me. But anyway, if we go on on their on their latest report, if we go on their latest report, there is that report there. You see it in front of you. Um, if we go on, we skip page five, we skip page six, and we go on page eight. That's the page I want to concentrate on. If we go on page eight, page eight tells us, as you can see there with the heading, it says, table number four, individual land ownership by race in, in hectares. And they break down each province. They break down each race that we have in in South Africa, and they give you the percentage. So this is the latest stats. We are not stupid when we are talking about this land issue. We are not thumb-sucking these numbers. Now, as you can see, the biggest province in South Africa, which is Northern Cape, white people own in hectares, in hectares, they own about 77% of the land in South Africa. 
it's not me, it's the land audit that says that. And that is equivalent to 11 million hectares. Imagine, ladies and gentlemen, 11 million hectares. And now if you go to the, the number two, the number two will be free state. White people own the free state by 75% in terms of hectares. And that is 3 million hectares. Is it 3 million hectares? Yes. And then, um, and then we've got, um, what you call? We call, we've got who's, who's, uh, Western Cape. In Western Cape, they own about 2 million hectares there. And then we've got who follows there? Uh, I believe it's the Northwest with 73 million. And then on, on, the, on the table, when you go to your right, you can see it says white at the top. It says African. I, I love it that it says African and does not call the other people African. It says colors, though they are also color, uh, African, but they're denying it. And then it says Indian, and then it says others, and then it says co-owned. You understand what I'm saying? So the tables are there, ladies and gentlemen. The tables are there, the numbers are there. Then, then the, the, the correct number is about 75% to 80% of the land of South Africa is owned by white people per hectare. We're speaking about per hectare. So we should not be debating that. The white guy then says, listen, uh, how are you going to secure property rights? Oh, uh, because what do white people want? They want you to, to tell them that actually we're going to expropriate land, but not yours. They need that security. As business people, as homeowners, as farm owners, they want you as a government, a black government, to tell them, like, listen, you took our land, you killed our people, you did everything that is, uh, that is written in the hell book to destroy another fellow human being. But when we are in power, we are going to protect your land. What type of nonsense is this? And listen to the question that he says then, is, uh, when he speaks about land that was acquired before 1994. And this is where I get, woo, my people, this is where Masokulma land acquired by white people before 1994. Listen to the answer of Vuyo uh, Zungula and I'll come back for more. No, the question of land expropriation without compensation is not a case whereby you just wake up and you take land willy-nilly, like it has been done in other countries. But how, how do you protect against that? In our view, you need to correct the wrongs of the past. If a person got land by the killing and the brutal murder of people, there needs to be justice. We can't run away from that fact. Right. However, if a person rightfully acquired land by purchasing land, paid for the land, mm. then that person cannot, um, you can, you cannot just wake up now and want to take that land, whereas a person actually, um, you know, paid for the land and followed um, the normal processes when it comes to the acquisition of okay. the land. So if I bought the farm in 1987, Legally, yeah, I've got the documents. I'm fine. I keep that land. Yeah, if you bought the land, yes, um, you know, um, everything was done legally, yes, and above board. In our view, um, there's there's nothing that needs to be corrected. The there. government then couldn't mm. expropriate my yes, land. Yes, but if a person is a recipient of a land that was gotten through. Um, you know, um, l um, you know, land disposition mm -hmm. and, you know, um, the brutal murder of our people, surely we need to correct all of those. Wrongs. Yes, um, all I'm saying is that if we're going to then say only land that was purchased, you know, we've got records now that go back 150 years, all that land is purchased. Do you know what I mean? You're going to find little pockets, we know, because there have they've, they've been cases of land that was taken as recently as the 70s and 80s. But what I'm saying is that I'm quite confused by this because ultimately what ends up happening do you set up some department that's meant to be ethical in their distribution of land it it becomes a nightmare and i'm not saying that uh, that uh, nothing should be done about it but i'm just very curious to know whether land rights are protected or not mm. land rights are definitely protected so they're protected mm. but maybe not no they're definitely protected but in the context of saying if a person um, got the land via illegal means, then obviously there needs to be justice. Because for us, you can't protect something. Now that, that was, statute exists already, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, you There's can't, been land yeah. claims courts for the last 30 years. Yeah, you can't protect land that has been 
gotten through illegal means. Exactly. So that is the, the basis of the question of land expropriation without compensation. It is mm. a question of justice. It is a question, again, of saying that the manner in which it must be done. So that is why when we're talking about the question of land expropriation without compensation, we're also saying that the point of departure from the government now the constitution, um, there's a lot of back and forth when it comes to amending section 25, and there's a lot of unhappiness. Nothing is stopping the government now yeah. from developing what they currently have ownership on um, when it comes to developing, making um, land available for the mm -hmm. citizens, providing world-class living accommodation for the people and providing farms for the people so that, yes. you know, you, you scale up as many people as possible mm -hmm. whilst you are dealing with this sensitive issue. Um, but at the same time, you can't now have a government that will say the land question in South Africa is going to be sorted on a singular day whereby the constitution is going to be amended. In our view, st the government must start with, um, uh, with the land that is under their control and doing all of these things that, that I've mentioned. Because you see, Ladies and gentlemen, when we talk about amending the section 25 of our constitution, this is exactly why what I want to be fixed. Ziakala mach, lale ladi. Utre lang fela. Utre lang fela. Horkubuwe puwe utre khalam. Puwe ya banna. Utre. What are we saying about the land question pre-1994? Uh, Vuyo Zungula then says something that contradicts, according to me, the expropriation of land without compensation. The essence of it. The reason why we are trying to expropriate land. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. When we expropriate land before compensation, anything acquired, bought, claimed, obtained pre-1994 is deemed illegal according to me as a pan-Africanist. I don't care where did you, who did you buy the land for. Why am I saying that? Because the white man then says, listen, what about people that acquired land in 1985 and they've got the documents, the, the, the proof of payment that they bought the, 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 the what you call, the land um, legally. What is legal? Anything that happened pre-1994 is illegal and we must stand on that ladies and gentlemen we must not be shy to say to white people anything that your grandparents obtained in 1994 uh, before 1994 we as africans we as africans we we consider that as illegal occupation politicians must say this Without any fear or favor, like, listen, I'm not going to debate uh, a title deed of 1985. I'm not going to debate an, a title deed of 1993. Up to 1993, you were still killing us. You shot and killed Chris Hani in 1993. We were still dying in numbers in 1993. Need I remind you? I don't even want to go to the other years. So you can't tell me about obtaining anything legally in 1985, 1902, 1937, 19... I don't want to know. Everything is being taken. Everything is being taken, especially the mines, especially the farms. Those are the first things to be taken because they contribute immensely to the economy of our country. Those are the first thing that we take. Then we go for res residential areas. In residential areas, we cut down according to the, the needs of the family. We don't chase them away. We cut them down. You cannot be a family of eight people and then you want to own 30, uh, 200 he hectares when there's black people that are living in square meters of uh, 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 25 by 25 stands. Well, you are enjoying the big land. It is unfair. It is unfair. You understand what I'm saying? So we are not chasing people away. No, but we are taking back our land. When we look at the population of white people, they are 8%. So the most that they must own is about 10% of the land of South Africa. Nothing more. Someone must say this. If, they, if you guys don't say this, I don't know. 
Our politicians are continuously wanting to be politically correct. What is nonsense of a title deed of 85? People were moved into what we call townships now, Enyanga, Kayalisha, Soweto, and all of that. Our people were moved from their right places. Now black people feel like, no, Soweto is home. No, Soweto is where you are moved to. You are chased to. Khalishiwe in Kimberley. Khalishiwe in, in the olden days was used to be called, even today, it's called Ferhenuch, meaning far enough. You, we, we, are pu we are pushing you far enough from what the means of production, town. You have to walk to town. You have to take a taxi to town. That is what is happening here. Let us not have fear, ladies and gentlemen, to say boldly, anything obtained, bought, secured, whatever, before 1994 is illegal. It's illegal. We only acknowledge and accept anything that was tribally bought, tribally given, and tribally awarded by our kings and chiefs. That is what I'm saying. Let's continue. <laughs> I'll have to do a full video where I analyze for you guys the, the uh, land audit. I think I need to do that for some of you guys so that you can know. If you want to see that, Go on the comment section and say, King, Shia Land Audit. Shia Land Audit. So I can give you a, pro a proper land audit so that you can understand the when we speak about hectares, what are we speaking about? When we speak about all this land that is owned by the our white counterpart, what are we speaking about? Okay. Uh, on the third clip, okay, let me see if I, I, I covered everything there on the second clip. Yes, so we, we, uh, we cannot continue wanting to protect. We want to protect and give people uh, what you call, um, uh, uh, what you call that thing, uh, so, uh, a property so, uh, security. We cannot continue to do that. Now, the white man tried to throw another ball to see if we care about what we are saying. He says, listen, investors are not going to come and invest in South Africa if you guys continue like this. Listen to what he says. I'm sort of saying a similar thing about land. You know, there's a red herring here. We're talking about amending the constitution mm -hmm. when, the current, um, when the current laws have not been applied, mm -hmm. right? Where mismanagement, the, any land that was gained uh, incorrectly, we've had land claims throughout the, 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 the new South Africa and it, it exists and it should exist. Yeah. So, uh, you know, all I'm saying is while this argument rumbles on, mm. all it does is it makes investors uh, increasingly nervous. It makes South Africans increasingly nervous because you don't have the certainty. Yeah. Uh, so why pursue it mm. is, is really what I'm saying. Because the problem here isn't the law. The mm. problem is the implementation of current laws. Yeah. No, I think what needs to be for, uh, for the investors to realize is that um, you know, South Africans must fight for justice and correct whatever wrongs that happened in the past. Any investor that wants now South Africans to ignore the injustices of the past, then it's an investor not worth, worth having because we can't have an investor that wants to well, be part of, um, you know, encouraging. Now, with the best respects, let's just say I'm, an, I'm a potential investor that wants to invest in South Africa. Yeah. I'm looking at a country that's... Um, that's that's been in its current form for 30 years. Mm. And you're saying that I must come in and understand that maybe we haven't done anything for the last 30 years and we feel like doing it now. That seems to be quite unfair, an expectation to put on any investor, be it domestic or foreign, mm. to say, well, you know, we'll get to it eventually. But in the meantime, we may throw your world upside down. Those investors need certainty. That's, yeah. that's why they invest in places with certainty and do not invest in places yeah. without it. That's why the failure of this gov current government is on the question of policy certainty and communicating to say... I don't this think is, so. Surely yeah. the problem with this government is implementation. This is um, The government should say, this is what the problem is in terms of the injustices. This is how we're going to correct it. That will give the investor um, confidence to know, okay, there's certainty here. But on the question of the failures of the government, here we're dealing with a government that has failed in dealing with crime, dealing with the land issue, dealing with the economy. Now, surely when we as a party are saying that we are not 
going to shy away from correcting even the wrongs of this current government because we are not part of the 30 years of the mismanagement of the country. So that is why, in our view, we communicate clearly and with clarity to say this is what's going to happen so that investors are having a clear understanding of what is going to happen when it comes to land ownership in our country. However, with us being um, saying that utilizing the existing land that is in the hands of the government and not just willy-nilly taking land like it happened in other countries, that should give whoever that is an investor confidence to say the intentions of these people is not just to distract the country or destroy the country, but the intention is to um, correct the wrongs of the past and at the same time approaching the manner in a approaching the issue in a manner that is um, um, you know leading to self-reliance and taking lessons from how the other countries got it wrong when it comes to dealing with the issue listen my pen africanist i applaud vuyo zungula for answering this question properly for answering properly uh, one thing i need to learn from abo vuyo zungula is that their temperature stays cool and as a young man, I don't understand how do you speak about land and um, your temperature in a change. You understand? That's something I need to learn. Other people um, don't like uh, loud people. They just don't. They just don't like it. And um, I also understand that being loud does not mean you are right. <laughs> you you don't make noise because you are right. But there's some points that I bring across that. Um, are very dear and close to my heart and I cannot um, keep a straight face or a neutral face and a neutral tone and a neutral body language when I'm speaking about the land issue. I'm going to be a professor land for my, for my heart. I do this. This is what I do. So investors, he says, investors are not going to invest in South Africa if there's no land security. They're going to run away. They go, you cannot run away from any country in Africa when we come to the land issue. You think if Congo changes its land issue and the government and the people own the land, the investors will run away? No, the investors still want to mine. They need the minerals. They need them. Samsung, um, Toyota, Apple, uh, Tesla, whatever they need the minerals they need them they don't have these minerals in europe or in america some of these new uh, minerals are purely fine found in africa only yeah we are blessed i told you our land is pregnant there is no investor that is going to run away but zungula says we an investor cannot uh, uh, expect from us that we should ignore our history we cannot ignore our history uh, in the hopes of saying we don't want to chase investors. Uh, listen, my African people, as bad thing in Labantu, as bad thing, as thing in China, as thing in Russia, we don't need America, we don't need anyone. All of them need us. The investor needs us because they want to make money. They need us. We will control the means of production, us as Africans. We don't need anyone. Huh? We don't need anyone. We know how to go get these minerals ourselves now. We are not like other countries. Mr. Zungula has clearly said we need to learn from other countries how they did their land grab and took back their land and take the pros and, and, and the cons and learn from them. That is what we want to do. We are not going to haphazardly, carelessly just take land like we are, we are barbarics. No. We are mature intellectual beings and we know what to do today. That's all we are saying. If the investor does not want to invest here because the people are owning the land, he can go. The only thing that investors can get when it comes to hectares of land is a lease agreement. It's a lease agreement that benefits immensely the people of that land. The people living around that land. There is no one that is going to mine and the community that stays around the mine is poor. No ways. No ways. We cannot accept that as Africans. We need to stop accepting rubbish. The abnormal has become normal now. We had, nonsense has become the norm of the day. We need to stop. Hmm. Hmm. 
Angazi ni ovuga nini? I don't know when are you going to wake up. Listen to me, my African people. Land is all you need. Land is what you need. Land is dignity. Land is pride. Land is wealth. You need the land. Even if you don't have money, have land. You laugh at, laugh at the people of Zimbabwe. But today, you will see the economy of Zimbabwe will start rising up. And one thing they will not short, the people, the poor people of Zimbabwe will be rich because they have land. Mark my words, save this video. You are laughing at the people of Zimbabwe for owning hectares and hectares, but not doing anything with it because they are poor. Watch when the economy changes around. Watch what will happen to the people of, of Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe can be easily the richest country in Sadek. Easily. Because of the minerals that they have there. I'm saying to you, you need land. You need land. Listen, in my conclusion, should you be too confused? Should you be confused to the point of level where you get to the voting station, you get to the ballot paper, and you don't know who to vote for? Listen, vote for the ATM. I'm talking about you who are confused. Our votes are safe with this party. Why am I saying that? There isn't a party, leave the ANC alone, there isn't a party that speaks bad about this party. There isn't a single party I have heard that speaks bad about Vuyo Zungula. All of them like this man. And that's what happens when you have a backbone. When you have integrity. People will love you like they love Uvuyo Lechu Zungula, the, AT, the ATM president. You understand what I'm saying? So I'm saying, <laughs> Nina, I'm confused. You don't know where to throw away your, your vote. Ilashele ATM, man. Ilashele, just a deposit, to, deposit a vote to ATM, please. Please, for those who are confused, you don't know, you must vote ANC or EFF or, or um, Konto. Or confused. I'm just talking about those who are confused. You will not be um, throwing away a vote if you vote the ATM. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. So I just want to hear what you guys are saying especially on the issue of land obtained before 1994. What are you saying about that land? Give me your expert um, opinion on the conversation. I enjoy reading your comments. I, I enjoy reading your comments and replying to them on the comment session. So thank you so much. Uh, let's meet on the comment session. Those who haven't, please, I'm trying to reach 30,000 subscribers before 29 May, before the elections. We want our channel to grow. Why? Because we need our channel to have a bigger voice. We need to, to reach more African people and try to uh, uh, ignite that black consciousness spirit again. So I'm begging you, click the subscribe button. The like button is also important. And also just go there and uh, leave your thoughts on the comment section. Pray for us, support us in any way, shape or form that you can do it. I will appreciate it. Until we meet next time, don't forget to pray. But after you pray, stand up, do your best so that God can do the rest. Peace and pan-Africanism. I salute you.